Hey folks, the good, the bad, and the ugly. I want to hear all of it from you in that comment section below because today we're doing a powerful Q&A session where we can all learn and continue to grow from this channel. So if you can consider liking this kind of content, hit that like button because first and foremost, Mr. Financial says it is impossible to call when the bottom is in. In hindsight, we will all say this and that should have made it easy to call. In reality, it's future events that will dictate when the market will bottom and everyone says not to time the market and then try and time the market. And unfortunately, you have been doing this too. And to some varying degrees, yes, I have been trying to time the markets, not the bottoms, obviously, but I'm already fully invested. I've got these huge positions in index funds that are constantly reinvesting the dividends. And with new capital, I earn, as the great Warren Buffett says, you know, interest rates going up is like gravity to the market. I don't want to buy these aggressive rallies like we saw through November. I'd rather buy the downturned events. Inevitably, those downturn events will come to an end and there'll be more aggressive upsides. I don't know if that's three, six, 12 months from now, but with new capital earned as I don't do options. I don't short the market. I want to optimize it by being more aggressive when the market is downtrending. So it's just my own little kind of spin on what I'm seeing going on here. And it is working to my favor. And like I said, everyone's got their own madness to their method. But like I said, I'm not trying to time the exact bottoms of the market. Here's a bit of a hateful comment coming from Jason Spooner saying, it's so true, like when you were pushing Facebook at 320 to your viewers, but then sold your holdings a few days later. A clown is a good, great name for this video. So first and foremost, Facebook, I held for years. It's not like something I just pumped and dumped. In fact, I don't even think I really lost any money on it because I held it for so damn long and I ended up selling out between like the 220s and 250 area. But you got to keep in mind, as my portfolio scaled, as the market conditions change, my own opinions will change on my holdings. You go look at my portfolio from a couple years ago and it doesn't look anything like it does now. Hell, I was pumping things like GEO back in the day, gold, precious metals, all this stuff that isn't a big proponent to my portfolio. But that's the point of the growth of this channel is to be fully transparent and show you guys that growth without pumping things and then saying, oh, I'm buy this, buy this, and then I'm selling it, but I'm not telling you. That was what me, Kevin, did, the diamond hander that said he'd never leave the market and then told his paid viewers, the paid members, first and foremost, that he sold all of these stocks, leaving the rest of you out to hang the drive for like way longer before he publicly announced it. The guy continues pumping penny stocks on his followers. First and foremost, I like small cap companies as much as I like ETFs, as I like growth companies and REITs and dividend stocks and all this, all these different facets can play a role in your portfolio and small cap companies and small businesses make up almost 50% of the workforce. And I like rubbing shoulders with people running 10 to $100 million plus companies. I don't have the privilege to work with the likes of Elon Musk, but to be helping these small companies out and actually learning about new industries. And in fact, I'm buying a new small cap company I'm going to be talking about soon. I have angel investments that are going to be coming public soon. And if it's not a facet that you enjoy, not only do I fully disclose that they're sponsored to this channel, which helped me continue making content. But again, you do not have to watch that content if you're not into it. You can always just watch the dividends or the ETF content. I don't like to think of myself as a pump and dumper. I've always been transparent about that. Not much passive on this channel. Again, not sure what you mean about that. All my biggest gains in my channel have been stocks I held for at least one to three plus years, whether it was Apple, Northland Power, Canopy, MyMet, all those companies, right? So hopefully not too much hate coming out of here. James says, markets are still grossly overvalued here. Why spy over VT? You expect the US to outperform forever, clown? Now, I, this is a reference I made to myself. I was a magician for damn near 10, 15 years. I consider myself a clown. I don't know what I'm doing here on YouTube, but nonetheless, folks, why do I like spy over over VT. Well, first and foremost, the global markets for a one for one comparison, they just underperform. They always have. And VT is primarily just holding US stocks with just a hint of some global diversification. You look at the Vanguard total market index is up 100% uh, since basically 2012, whereas VOO is actually up 202% the double the performance. And honestly, when you're buying the S&P 500, you're still getting the same global exposure. You don't think Apple, McDonald's, Pepsi aren't globalized companies. I don't need exposure to countries that particularly I don't understand as well. I mean, we talked about this with some of the China and BABA stuff. I'd rather stick to the two economies I trust that are a little bit more commingled with the US and Canada. So I have a lot of Western diversification and those stocks reach out globally. And yes, when we're talking about the biggest companies in the world, do I think they're going to continue to outperform rather than, you know, select focused countries? Perhaps I could be wrong, but that's where I'm making my bet currently. Uh, so let's take a look at uh, Matthew. Uh, why are you investing in US ETFs if you have the Canadian equivalent with the conversion fees? So conversion fees are insane. They can be anywhere from one and a half to two and a half 
5%. And this is an easy question to answer. Not only do I like operating in the native currency that is the US, the you know, the global powerhouse, the dollar, but I also work for US dollars in my business. I get paid in US dollars and I invest that without converting it to the Canadian dollar, losing an extra 2%. So do keep that in mind. But if you don't have the luxury and you don't want to convert currency, there's so many options out there to actually buy these US stocks like VFE, the S&P 500 index over the pure US dollar play VOO or SPY. And this one's really interesting because if you look at the year to date performance, it's only down 13.1%, whereas VOO on the year to date basis is actually down 19.4%. Why is that? It's because the US dollar has rallied so aggressively this year against the Canadian dollar, meaning if you owned US assets, that dollar has strengthened. So if you sold this asset, converted it back to the native currency being in Canada here, you'd actually make a bigger gain. And that actually gets reflected in this stock price because it's a US index, but is converted automatically and represented in this chart as Canadian dollars. Very fascinating stuff for you uh, Canadians out there that want that exposure, but don't want to convert currencies. Ryan says, can you just show the CAD pricing of stocks versus always going back and forth from one bank to another and changing from CAD to USD? So when I do my broad portfolio overviews, that general chart that I show you, that, that spreadsheet, that is all converted to Canadian dollars. That's why I show it because it represents the native currency as it stands in the moment with the dollar conversion values. Whereas when I'm diving down into my actual brokerage accounts, they're divvied up between Canadian and US brokerage accounts. I think I have like 13 or 14 different brokerage accounts between two different banks because every single one of my individual accounts has a multitude of accounts connected to it. It's kind of confusing, but hey, it's just the way the cards have landed with me, you know, having US and Canadian dollar focused investments. But nonetheless, Fit BH says, are you planning on adding any more individual dividend stocks back in Kyle to hit your uh, goal quicker on on the divvies. Actually, no, I'm thinking about doing the opposite, to be honest. I'm more or less kind of more inclined to focus on the ETFs because the true form of passive income is not having to manage the stocks. And that's why I hate looking at investors that have 40 or 50 dividend stocks because you just can't manage them. You're not doing the homework. There's no system in play that will weight the ones that are doing horribly that are going out of favor. Whereas, you know, the S&P 500, um, you look at BYM, VDY, uh, I think even SCHD guys, a lot of these have like mechanisms in play that will weight them based off market cap. And it makes it truly a lot more passive because you go look at the S&P 500. I mean, God knows 20 years ago. And if you told yourself, hey, I'm just going to buy the biggest and largest dividend stocks that sit on the S&P 500. Those have changed pretty dramatically when you're talking about things like GE, a lot of these oil giants. A lot of those have underperformed over the long term and have been replaced by tech companies. So I'd rather own the indexes, get a less of a dividend, but not losing that growth potential that you're going to get from having that broader based exposure. So we'll talk about that more once we get into a portfolio overview soon here. Do you own any Tesla? No. Made my fortune on Tesla, my small fortune, got out at a great time. It's something that I will perhaps consider buying back into um, as these pressures continue to weigh on Tesla into 2023. I'm just sidelining it for now and just being an observer. I do love Tesla, but the entire stock market is pure Fugazi. I think it's going to be one of the largest auto companies in the world by revenue. Um, it's just a matter of we're kind of in this overvalued phase versus market perception phase, and it's going to get messy for a bit. Uh, G Mark says, I'm 50% cash. Let's go. I I don't know if I'd be proud of that. Uh, unless you're like a multi-millionaire, I'd get having a huge pile of cash. But for me personally, I don't like having any more than 10% because if this market turns around at some point, which it will, too much cash in the markets, too much fear when that alleviates, we're always going to end up seeing double digit gains as every recession, every crash in the market has proved prior. So I'd rather try and cost average with the cash and just keep a healthy position for an emergency fund, you know, no more than about six to 12 months. And again, as new cash comes in, I will solely invest it as the market's uh, kind of downtrend. But let's talk with Luna here. What do you think about market GICs versus registered GICs? Currently, Royal Bank has a market GIC that guarantees 10% return in three years with a chance of it going up to 25%. If you guys don't know what these are, guaranteed investment certificates, very similar to bonds. They do have something called market linked GICs where they're linked to different aspects of the market. Scotia has one that's linked to the utility market offering similar returns. To be honest, you know, I could take it or leave it. If you're into that kind of more safe investment, then I think it's a really great opportunity. For me personally, I would just be using GICs to park my emergency fund for short periods of time. I'm not looking to lock in like five year rates just because I think there's more value in the long term to the market. Again, as Buffett has described, you know, uh, interest rates are like gravity. They pull the market down, but inevitably when that flips, that gravity will get loosened again and the markets will continue to fly as they always have in the past. But on this note, folks, I hope you enjoyed this quick Q&A 
Q&A session, and I'll pass the question off to you. Let me know what you think about all of this in that comment section below. Stay cool, stay awesome, and I'll catch you in the next one.